where an SME can go on the internet and use an interface which is a bit like PowerPoint, create a website in it, and then publish that. And it's often free with the service provider charging a premium for value-added services. A similar solution is what we call website in a box, which is a software package that an SME could buy, and they go through the same kind of website creations process, but do that on their PC, and that, that software would guide them through the process. Um, there's an initiative called Getting British <coughs> Business Online, which is backed by Google and BT and some others, and that gives SMEs a free, a free URL, a website address, and helps them with website creation. And then finally, for the more IT savvy SME, there are new open source platforms. So Drupal is content management, Magenta does e-commerce. And essentially what this does is remove some of the software costs for the more professional type website builds. So overall the finding here is it's becoming much easier, quicker, and lower barriers to set up for SMEs wanting to get, get online. So some of the more interesting developments are in what we call marketing and brands. So this is essentially three, three overlapping types of activity that an SME might engage in. One is marketing to acquire new customers. Another is branding, so building a company's brand online. And finally, what we call customer retention, which is the kind of activity to market to existing customers to get them to buy more. And I think what we found across this area, and as Brian said earlier, online marketing enables SMEs to do new things and creates new opportunities for them. So many of the things I'm going to talk about now were not possible in the purely offline world. Particularly, some of the innovations in this area allow SMEs to market to niche audiences. So these may be interest groups, they may be geographically dispersed groups, or they may be groups with a high propensity to buy their product. Um, a good example of that is, there's a company called, oh, what's it called, I've forgotten the name, um, somethingbags.com. What they do is they, dustbags.com, they essentially sell vacuum cleaner bags. And the way it works is a consumer they might need a new bag. They put the code into Google, do a search, and the likelihood is this company will come up because there aren't many people who supply vacuum cleaner bags. Now, if you think back a few years, running that kind of business would not have been easy or efficient in the offline world. It really needs search to connect up the user with the business. And in the offline world, you probably find vacuum cleaner bags were sold in kind of general hardware stores. You could not set up a specialist and run that effectively. So those, those are some of the key themes that, you know, there are new opportunities here. And what I'm going to do now is just talk a bit about four different areas of online marketing and how those are changing and how, as Brian said earlier, this is a very dynamic sector. So what this graphic is showing you is it's laying out the different mechanisms on two dimensions. So the horizontal axis refers to the targeting capabilities of a marketing mechanism. How, how good is it, is it at reaching a distinct and targeted group of people? And on the vertical axis, how accessible is it to SMEs? And by that we mean two things. How easy is it to use? Does it need a lot of technical know-how? And secondly, are there kind of cost barriers to using it? Is there a minimum spend? And if you look at the top right, so there's, there's search marketing. Um, that's essentially paying for search term sponsored links in search results. And that is highly targeted. It gives advertisers the ability to buy consumer intent. So if you're searching for something, the chances are you, you kind of want a product in that area. And it's very accessible to SMEs because to use search marketing, an SME can use an online interface, which is very, 
very straightforward to do. But the big change here, and currently um, search marketing, it accounts for well over half of all online marketing spend. But what's changing here is there are three other types of marketing mechanism. And those are all changing in their capabilities and some of their characteristics are becoming, starting to mimic some of those of search. So we start at the bottom left. Um, there's what we call display advertising. So that is essentially the, if you go on a regular website, that these are the banner ads, the video ads that you might see on those sites. And what's changing there is um, display advertising is becoming more targeted because advertising networks are able to access consumer data, behavioral data, and use that to target their ads. And at the same time, some networks are also providing an online interface which SMEs can use to buy the advertising, which means gone are the days when an SME needed or a company needed uh, say £5,000 minimum to spend to even get into this market. Increasingly they can do it in smaller quantities and do it with, with a simple online interface. So that kind of starts moving behavioural advertising up towards the search segment. And similarly with um, social networking, essentially that's using Facebook and similar techniques, say LinkedIn, it's, it's very new. I don't think the industry's quite figured out how best to use these things, but there are new forms of marketing that can be done. So for example, an SME can allow its followers and fans to keep in touch with it. And the capabilities of that are changing all the time. Facebook has a huge amount of data about its, about its customers, and that can be harnessed to make it more targeted in future. And then finally, Bottom right hand side, what we've called affiliate marketing, which is essentially price comparison and similar things. That is already highly targeted, but it's becoming more accessible to SMEs. So they will be able to submit their details to these services more easily than may have been possible in the past. So all of this means um, this sector is highly dynamic. What may have been the preserve only of search marketing in the past might be able to be achieved in future by a collection of other marketing mechanisms too. So just zooming in on a couple of marketing areas of interest. Um, first of all, search. I just want to tell you a bit about how it works and what one or two of the issues are that might arise in this area. So anyone who's used search will know that when you, when you type in a search term, you get a results page. And in the middle of a results page are a set of links. And those, the ones in the middle we call natural search. These are the ones which are not influenced by payment. They're essentially the free results. And then on the, on the right-hand column and at the top of the page, you get sponsored links. And these are the ones that are paid for by advertisers. Now, just a few thoughts about each of those areas. So natural search. Um, this is crucial for some SMEs traffic. So going back to the dustbin, um, the vacuum cleaner bag example, a lot of their traffic will come through natural search. So they're very sensitive to how, how that system works. And the way it does work is that Google has an algorithm which essentially looks at the search term and consumer types in and selects a series of sites which she thinks are A, relevant, <coughs> and B, high, of high quality. And the way it, that algorithm works is not entirely transparent. It's a proprietary Google al algorithm, and it's constantly changing. And on the search marketing side, so this is where the advertiser is paying for the sponsored links. Um, the difference there is that the ranking of the links is determined by the product of two things. So one is the bid price. So what happens is an SME says, for a particular search term, I'm willing to pay 10p a click or one pound a click. And various different SMEs and other companies bid for those search terms. And then Google has an algorithm which determines something called quality score, which is their interpretation of 
how good the site is and how relevant it is, which again is based on a number of different criteria which are not fully transparent. And what happens is when someone enters a search term, the system works out the product of those two things and ranks the links accordingly. And ranking is crucially important. What we found is there's evidence that the links that are at the top of a page receive many more click-throughs than the ones that are lower down the page. It's all about how kind of people's eyes scan a page and where their attention rests. Now, one of the issues may be that on both sides of this, on both, in both kinds of search, there's an algorithm. It's essentially a system, and the advertisers are trying to optimise themselves for this system. So they may be able to make changes to their website, which makes them perform a bit better in search. But what happens when the algorithm changes? And as I said earlier, Google is constantly innovating and changing its algorithms. And as Brian pointed out, that can be positive for some people and negative for others. So it could potentially disadvantage some people as it evolves. Um, and the other area we're looking at here is affiliate marketing. And this differs from search in that in the search model, the advertiser pays per click through. So they may pay 10p for every customer who comes to their site. In the affiliate marketing model, the advertiser pays for every customer who comes to their site and buys a product or service. So, I mean, one of the most established models in here is, um, for example, Money Supermarket, where people <coughs> buy insurance or other financial products. And the insurer may say, I, I'm willing to pay £10 for every customer who buys on my site. And then Money Supermarket will list that insurer alongside others, and when people click through and buy, they get paid. And there are other similar models. So there's price comparison. There's also um, some review sites where if people click through, they get paid under the affiliate model. And also things like voucher code sites where consumers can go to get money off vouchers, and if they click through and buy, the site will receive some affiliate payments. Now, the key question here is to what extent is the prominence given to different SMEs and advertisers and the rankings, how, how objective is that? And you know, our research didn't uncover a clear answer about this, but what we did find is that there seems to be consumer pressure for these services to be objective. And to give an example, in the US, um, there's, a, there's a site called Yelp which is essentially a directory service, and there has been some discussion about whether their, the prominence and rankings, and in fact some of the reviews on that site are, are objective, or whether those have to some degree been influenced by whether or not an advertiser has paid for the service or not. And there's been some consumer and industry backlash against that as a result. So it kind of suggests that, you know, there's there's a clear incentive, at least, for, for these services to, to be objective, or at least appear to be objective. Good, so that's marketing brands. Um, the next